Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. We've got you guys an update on a pretty big severe weather event that's going to be taking place across the Deep South as we get later into this week. And this could actually end up being a multi-day severe weather event, at least a significant severe weather event. Um, but could it be an outbreak? I've got all the details and all the uh, answers to your questions coming right up, right? So just starting out this video by apologizing that you can't see myself. I, my screen recorder is acting up today, so... That's how we're going to be rocking and rolling today. But you can see, take a look at your current radar. Things have gotten much more active than what we were at just a few days ago. Starting out here in the northeast. This is the main storm right now. You've got a major storm system, a pretty big one. It's moving across the northeast here. This is bringing some extremely heavy and steady rainfall across New England. I know I have already picked up over an inch of rainfall, so... Pretty big flooding concerns getting into tonight. We're going to be discussing what's going on with that. Um, and there already have been a lot of floods, you know, up and around the uh, Brooklyn and just, you know, New York City metro area. Um, and then up here in the Great Plains, look at this. We've got a little small line of storms moving through North Dakota, which is very wild that this is actually moving so far north. But you could argue that these would be some thunderstorms really some gusty winds, but non-severe thunderstorms moving through Nebraska, North Dakota, possible tonight. And then you've got basically just a line of precipitation moving across the upper Midwest. Down here into Texas, you've got more storms that are firing up here. A lot of uh, cape and instability has been left in this region, you know, throughout today and a lot of yesterday. Um, go follow Broderick Coward on X, and uh, he also has an awesome YouTube channel. He um, he, he got some very good photos of that. He's going to be making a video of those storms yesterday, so go ahead and, uh, watch him. I'll put a pinned, uh, I'll put a pinned link to his channel in the comments and the description. Um, but out here in the Southern California, I have some precipitation still kind of just falling around here. All right, um, but yeah, it's going to be pretty much it. So let's move on here. Let's get, uh, go and take a look at your current radar. All right, and you can see that, you don't have, you still don't have much going on, but up in the northeast, you got a flood watch that's going out from really all the way from southern Maine all the way down here through the northeast coast, all the way down to south central New Jersey. This is where in this dark green shade you have the flood watch, and you can see in those lighter green shades, so many counties that are scattered around this area are at least under uh, flood advisories, and a lot of flood flash flood warnings and regular flood warnings have been issued. All right, you still have red flag warnings for the panhandle of Texas all the way up to southeastern New Mexico, but, you know, that's those that's going to be out for those areas that aren't seeing the thunderstorms. The areas that are being, seeing the thunderstorms are areas towards the DFW Metroplex area. All right, so um, just be aware that, the, you know, any pop-up storm is possible tonight. If you're in that area, you got winter weather advisories for western Nebraska, so it looks like my radar was incorrect on that. We we might have seen a change over to rain, but looks like it could be just snow with that line that we were looking at. Still some uh, winter weather advisories out there in California. Let me try and get my uh, camera going here. Ugh, it's not working. Anyways, um, but, but yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So let's... Move on here, we'll take a look at the, the NAM 3km model. We're looking at the current rainfall that's moving through the northeast. It's very heavy. This was 8 p.m., so just about two two hours ago. You had the heaviest rain over Long Island and New York City. This was what it was pouring out there. It's still raining very heavily, but, I mean, it was raining very hard in western Long Island, pretty much exactly where I am. So that was as of 8 p.m. today. This is, by the time I'm filming this video, this is 10 p.m. right now. All right, you can see that the heaviest rain is off to the east, but you still got a good chunk of southern New England being impacted by this extremely uh, heavy, excessive rainfall. Um, and even the areas farther north, you're just in a very steady, light rain all day, and it's really in this dark green is where you're seeing just the regular rainfall. Light green, you're in the steady showers, um, but this is the very heavy rain, the excessive rain that we're talking about in the red shade. And we'll see as this continues into the middle of the night, these... Uh, these kind of these pockets of heavier rain get a little bit more isolated as this line of rain continues to break apart. But you you can still see that you know this this line of storms will be charging through southern New England as that low pressure moves off the coast of Long Island and then onto Connecticut here. But by 3 a.m. things should start to clear up for southern New England. But up into the 
uh, coastal northeast, um, up towards Massachusetts, like Boston, um, and Maine here, definitely the Gulf of Maine, you're still going to be dealing with the heaviest rainfall by then. Uh, and then by the time you're waking up tomorrow for your, uh, what is this going to be, your Thursday, all right, we're going to be clearing out for uh, New England, most of New England, but still up here in the coastal regions of the Northeast may still be dealing with some lingering showers, um, but that should be a, not, not a problem to be worried about. So let's move on here to the Southeast. We're looking at the NAM 12-kilometer model. We're going to be continuing to break down this upcoming severe weather threat, um, and I do think that this has been increasing, I, increasing um, and uh, we just got to break down the latest information that we've got. So ignore this. This is your storm system that's moving up the coast right now. You're watching a second one that's going to be coming in through Texas. So here it comes. This is all that rainfall. These are thunderstorms moving through like south central um, Missouri into Kansas. Here are some storms in, in northern Texas. So this is entering your Thursday, I believe. What is what is this? Today's the 6th, though. So, oh, gosh. Tomorrow is Thursday. So, yes, this is for tomorrow. Here are your storms, all right, that are firing across this region. All right, you can see they get a little bit more intense over, like, eastern Oklahoma. We're looking at the 12-kilometer model because the 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 three kilometer model in the NAM doesn't go out this far. Um, but here it comes. This low continues to deepen, actually, and you can see that um, we're seeing the strongest of storms really north of this low-pressure center, so into central and northern Arkansas, into western Tennessee, but even down into Mississippi, Alabama, we're seeing some of those stronger storms uh, continue to fire off this region. So really a Dixie Alley severe threat is what's looking likely with this. We could see storms maybe even as far north as the Ohio Valley. So yet again, another severe potential farther north. We saw that one last week where we had way up in the up and west. And then um, tomorrow and then into Friday, we may be dealing with storms uh, up to the north, um, just farther north than usual um, again. All right, but you can see that the storms are moving pretty swiftly through Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and northern Georgia, and then eventually Carolinas. Looks like Tennessee are going to be dodged by this. I don't think Tennessee is going to be impacted too much. It's going to be kind of a weird area highlighted in the SPC, which we'll look at in a bit. All right, but you, you've got a, still a line of storms that doesn't seem to be forming like a, like a line segment, meaning like a squall line at this point. So you still have a tornado threat. Um, by Friday, so, or actually, sorry, this would be Saturday, all right, because tomorrow's Thursday, the 7th, Friday, um, wait a minute, hold on, all right, today's Tuesday, right, I, I'm sorry, guys, I am losing my mind, what is going on, today's Wednesday, today's Wednesday, okay, so tomorrow is Thursday, March 7th, Friday is March 8th, and then March 9th is Saturday, so we're getting to Saturday at this point. And remember, when I looked at the uh, kinematics and the thermodynamics yesterday, I did highlight a region where I do think that where I did think the SPC would get upgraded. Well, we're gonna see what just what happened um, last night on the SPC in just a bit. But this is seven in the morning on uh, Saturday. You're waking up to a soggy weekend, um, but you got storms that are really racing across the southeast, and you're gonna get a feed of moisture both from the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. So. There's a chance for some just higher cape and instability in that area, uh, but these storms will definitely make it through this entire region without slowing down. That's a pretty good sign of a healthy storm system. So if, the, if this becomes negatively tilted uh, sooner, I do think that this severe threat could continue to ramp up. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to say now that, you know, the, everything's looking pretty good for this one to be a doozy, and we'll just have to get to that time frame and get closer to see what the SBC does with this uh, next severe threat. So, we're going to be moving on here to here to your 500 millibar jet stream winds. All right, so these are your winds in the lower to mid levels of the atmosphere. This is your positively tilted trough that's moving through. These wind gusts, or sorry, not wind gusts, um, these winds here, your jet stream winds have been increased significantly, I would say, just in the past 24 hours. If you look at yesterday's uh, European model, we only saw these w winds getting up to about 90 knots. Now we're already over 100. This is over central and uh, eastern Tennessee, but this entire red shade, this is a, uh, a lower level jet that's really ripping at 90 to 100 knots, so very strong level, low level winds here, um, that's associated with this low level trough, all right, um, let me get rid of that. And let's say this is stronger even back in the eastern Texas. That's going to help with the tornado threat and just the dynamics. If you get the right dynamics and the stronger the winds out here, um, 
in those areas and in and around those areas that will be seeing storms. Um, that's just going to be a better sign for those storms to produce tornadoes and damaged winds. Um, but you still got a very strong low-level jet, even uh, going into the Carolinas. So, you know, I mean, that looks pretty good. It does look pretty good, and this gets pretty strong. You know, 100, 100, 100 to 110 knots is not bad. That can definitely support some pretty significant damage wind gusts. We're talking 50 to 60 miles per hour. Obviously, it's a little too specific to tell, obviously, because you have to get into um, each little storm system. But get what I mean. I mean, the, the, the jet stream is going to be strong enough to support damage wind gusts that could be that strong. But we continue this into Sunday, and then eventually this moves on out. Um, but yes, I mean, it looks like a pretty strong trough is going to be moving through. And then this, this is gonna, it's at this point when this becomes negatively tilted because you're low. Remember, this is your trough back here. Your low, your actual low pressure is right here in the central Arkansas. Just so remember that, you know, even if this looks like a, even if this is positively tilted, this will s start to become negatively tilted with that low um, already being uh, out ahead. Um, with those storms, uh, with those storms. All right, so let's move on here to your dew points. We're going from your dynamics to your thermodynamics. Let's get this in motion here. All right, so that was your first round of moisture. So this is getting into Thursday already. We already have dew points getting into the 60s. And if you compare this to last week's severe threat, remember the day one, uh, the first day of that, uh, of that's you know just the severe weather event. Um, it took longer for these dew points to get up into the 60s in a favorable, um, just level for severe storms. But, you know, this time you don't really see these dew points struggling to get into the 60s. So you're seeing widespread 60s throughout Louisiana, uh, Texas, in Arkansas, and Oklahoma. 50s really through all of the deep south and the southeast, the Gulf Coast. And these dew points continue to rise. And boy, oh boy, is the. Gulf Mexico just going to pump as much moisture as it can up into this warm sector. So you could end up with dew points up into the 60s, all the way up into really Kentucky, maybe even Tennessee. All right, um, but very, very high dew points, almost 70 degrees. My goodness, so very, it's going to be very humid, uh, even with those warm, you know, with those warm temperatures combining with the uh, very moist um, conditions. You're going to get very humid conditions out there in the southern um, Louisiana, so like the New Orleans area, and this is for your Friday. So this is if you like, you can actually see your low pressure center is right here where you see the cold air or the cold dry air wrapping into that warm and moist air. Th that's where you can tell that low pressure center is. So let's say your storms are right here. I mean, look how favorable this the setup would be. I mean, you can see already, you have dew points in the seventies that are just waiting for these storms to move into that area. So if you already have storms firing across this region at this point with not a very strong dry line or maybe not even a dry line at all pushing these storms off to the east, I mean, you've got a pretty good, I would say you've got a pretty impressive setup here, especially if you got dew points in the 70s. Um, that, that's just going to support severe, severe thunderstorms in general. All right, but do these dew points continue to rise, and how far to the east do they get? Well, we're continuing to Saturday, and here you go. This is that area that I was talking about. The European model has increased just the intensity of the thermodynamics and the dynamics uh, since what we looked at yesterday. Yesterday, we only saw these dew points getting into the lower to mid-60s. Well, look at this. We're getting into the upper 60s, into the 70s, um, and then the, with the dynamics, even the dynamics, remember, we saw an 80 to 90 uh, not jet stream uh, as of yesterday, and then today we just looked at the jet stream winds, and they were g going from 90 to 100, maybe over 100 knots. So just a big intensity there for portions of really Georgia up towards the Carolinas. But this is it. You got your big moisture feed, your moisture return from the Gulf and the Atlantic working together to pump dew points into the 70s all the way up towards Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. And even into Alabama, we're talking about, you know, mid, mid to upper 60s and right around 70 degree dew points in this area. And this is already for Saturday. So this is why we're going to see these storms continue into this weekend and continue for almost a day three threat. Um, and the whole reason why the storms are not slowing down, because you don't have a dry line. You just have a, you just have a cold front that's not very strong. And the only reason why these storms 
are getting pushed off to the east is simply just because the cold front is moving in. I mean, and you can even see that the dry air isn't nearly as intense as what we saw uh, with last week's. Last week's, the dry line was much more impressive, and it really helped to try and eliminate that threat for severe thunderstorms. So that's pretty interesting what we see here. And then these dew points continue to rise finally until this storm makes its way off the coast um, by Sunday. So here we are, your SBC outlook. This has moved to your day two, or sorry, you are, yes, this is your day two outlook. We already have a slight risk going up from central and northern Texas through central Oklahoma into southern uh, Kansas, this is going out for your Thursday. This, this is Thursday tomorrow. You have level two out of five, slight risk for severe weather. Could this get upgraded to an enhanced risk? I don't think so, but it definitely could. I, I was caught off guard with last week's severe threat in the upper Midwest. You know, that's just how things can change, and that's a great example of what may happen uh, tomorrow. We may wake up tomorrow to an enhanced risk, but. Um, you never want to underhype things, but you definitely never want to overhype things. Um, but I'm just saying that it's possible. Um, but I think it, personally that's unlikely. But major cities in here: you got Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Arlington, Texas, Wichita, Kansas, Plano, Texas, coming out with a total population of about nine million people. So this is that uh, yellow slight risk area. Surrounding areas of that in the dark green, you're in a marginal level one out of five risk. Um, and then the light green shade, you're just going out for some regular thunderstorms. Tornado threat, you're up to 2% in this little shade, green shaded area. Wind threat, you're up to 5% in a more broad area, going all the way up to southern Kansas, down through south central Texas. And then your hail threat is slightly elevated, up to a 15% chance for the same area of that slight risk. So here it is, your day three outlook. This is for Friday. This is where I think... This is when I think we're going to have the highest threat for severe weather. I do think that this will be upgraded to an enhanced risk. I just, you know, it's already pretty large. You can see it's already large. And the fact that you already have a slight risk on your day three with just, you know, everything kind of lining up and looking pretty good on the models, I just do think that this is really, I think there's a real chance that this could get upgraded to an enhanced risk. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think as early as tomorrow, this may be an enhanced risk, but you never know. I mean, it, it could not, it could underperform, but I just personally do think that this, uh, risk area is going to be upgraded and it's going to be somewhere in a Northern, um, maybe central, uh, Louisiana up to Northern Louisiana and Southern Arkansas. But in this yellow city, you got level two out of five slight risk for a good chunk of Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, Alabama, Southern and central Arkansas into Southeastern Oklahoma and into eastern Texas, coming out with a total population of just over 12 mil million people, including New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, and Jackson, Mississippi. Surrounding areas of that, you're in the green marginal risk for severe weather. My goodness, that's a huge population of over 25.5 million people. Um, but yeah, it's just for the surrounding areas of that slight risk of 1 out of 5. Um, probabilistically, you're up to a 15% chance in the slight, and you're in a 5% chance in the marginal risk. So, here it is. I told you guys, I told you that it looked, oh, there we go. I told you guys that yesterday that I just thought that this looked pretty concerning, um, the dynamics and the thermodynamics for Georgia and just the southeast. Well, here you have, overnight, the European model really intensified um, just exactly what we looked at yesterday, and that got the SPC's attention. So here we have it, a day four slight risk. That's going to be like the third one of this week. We have another uh, day. This is like three days in a row of slight risks. So remember, this is equivalent to a slight risk. So you're going to have three days in a row of slight risks, and I do think by tomorrow we may end up with one of the slight risk areas uh, being upgraded to an enhanced risk. But here is your day four outlook. This is for Saturday into Sunday, going out from northern Georgia, sorry, northern Florida into southern and central, south central Georgia. You have a 15% slight risk for severe weather, including uh, a pop total population of just under 5 million people, including Jacksonville, Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Macon or Mackin, Georgia, and Albany, Georgia. Um, that's it. pretty much everybody inside of this 15% slight risk. Um, this could get extended. 
I def- actually I do think that this will end up being extended, meaning that's probably going to go farther north, and it's probably going to go kind of. I'll show you the. I'll, I'll draw an arrow to where I think it's going to get. I think it's going to go like this. I think it's going to go up to the Carolinas, and I think that also um, towards Alabama, you're going to see more of an extension with this risk area in general. Um, probably as soon as tomorrow. Um, and yeah, it's going to be pretty much it. All right. So thank you all for going to watch. It's going to wrap up the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys can, uh, just, you know, stay safe with the storm system. We'll continue to try and post updates along the way, to, just depending on how, you know, crazy my schedule is. So I'll try and get an update in for you guys tomorrow. We'll see if that day two outlook or day three gets upgraded to an enhanced risk. It might not, but, um, I just, I think it will. And, uh, it may not happen tomorrow, but it, it, de- it definitely could happen, uh, what is that, on Friday, all right? So, yeah, it's going to be it, and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Please leave a like on the video if you liked it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.